All right, guys, today's the day. We got all these ingredients together. That only means one thing. We're making the ultimate, the epic, the biggest, the baddest Chex Mix. I call it Scrabble. You guys stay tuned. All right, so we got a first. Well, actually, we got two firsts today. I absolutely love Chex Mix. This is one of those things that brings the family around. Uh, my grandmother made it when I was growing up. We've carried on the tradition and this is no difference kind of a difference we're using our griddles come on now look hey you throw all this concoction together you get it seasoned the way you like it and the next thing you know you're baking it and drying out and i thought what better way to try out our griddle uh to see if we can make checks mix on the griddle that's one two you got so much check mix one griddle won't do so we got both of them blazing today i think it's a pretty neat feature we've never done that before so this is a first last but not least number three i saw this really great idea from all the social media accounts, smoked Chex Mix. I've never tried it out. I'm on board. We got everything going, everything but the oven. All right, so let's get started. This is the deal. This is one of those recipes. If I could ever preach to anybody about anything, you put in it what you like, because I'm gonna put in it what I like, because I'm the one eating it. All right, Cheez-Its, Cheerios, Bugles, Kicks, Pretzels. Put the assortment of um, rice and wheat, checks, corn, whatever you like. I do have some staples that I'll go over. Uh, let's see, some garlic, some um, Lowry's season salt, Worcestershire sauce, and butter. I like to add a little hot sauce, okay? Here's the twist. If you don't have a hot sauce, you can always add buffalo sauce. Not a big deal. I typically like to make my um, Chex mix or Scrabble. We call it Scrabble. Who else calls it Scrabble? I think you're the only one that calls it Scrabble. What else do you call it? There's got to be more than one name. Nashville Hot Seasoning. It's just a way to add heat. For the Cajun lovers out there, add some Cajun seasoning. This is about making what you like. Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes you feel like a... There we go. Got some nuts just because we're trying to empty out the pantry. All right. First this, things so, first. So this is a lot. This is going to be a big batch. This is what we call in the baking culinary world the dump method because everything's getting dumped in there is no measurements i'm gonna keep my handy dandy thermometer out today just to see what's going on because there's gonna be a lot of product on the griddle in this sauce pot over here i am going to go ahead and start melting three sticks of butter i'm going to try my best to come up with a recipe if you guys are interested uh just look up theflattopking.com we will have the adjusted recipe as needed written below in there so you started saying about the Nashville hot and then you quit. So typically I would add cayenne pepper, but this is another um, alternative. And since I've got a bunch of it and we very rarely use it, I thought, why not give it a try? Add what you like. Here's the most important thing. A good sturdy trash bag that won't rip because that's a lot of ingredients to mix. And try to get the ones that's unscented. Let's be honest, let's just get a plain, Heavy duty trash bag, you'll be fine. People are gonna think you're nuts, honey. Won't be the first and won't be the last. Hey, this is one of those recipes though, think about it. We got the holidays coming up. Everybody knows about the holidays, right? You got football, you got basketball about to start up. You got postseason baseball. I mean, it's just a really good all-around dish. I call it a dish, a side, a appetizer, <laughs> game day appetizer. You can make snack. it and put it in like a cute little gift tin for the holidays for gifts. We usually give my mom like two gallon size Ziplocs worth. Now you got your cereal in there. All right, let's do the tumble method. Oh, there we go. I was going backwards with it, not forward. So you're just trying to mix it all up evenly. All right, now we've got all of our uh, concoction in the bag. This is what I got going on. Half a cup of granulated garlic, quarter cup of that Nashville hot, and a quarter cup of that seasoned salt. The one thing that I do not add to my Chex Mix or Scrabble is onion powder. For some reason, my personal opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I just omit it. If you guys like it, add it. 
just to switch it up this year, I'm gonna try the buffalo sauce. In the past, I've always done the hot sauce. All right, that's three sticks of butter and one quarter cup of hot sauce. Come back in with a half cup of Worcestershire sauce. Now this is what kind of recipe I like. This is the dump method. All right, so this is the idea. Maybe hard to see. I just lightly coat one cup at a time, close your bag, and just start mixing it. The idea, you want this butter to act like a glue. And then you're gonna come back in and add your seasoning. So be patient with the step. You wanna to try to get the butter, the Worcestershire sour sauce, everything, all coated, each individual piece. If you dump it all in one, I've never had success doing that. I've always had better success. Let me show you right here. So you just kind of spread the bag open. Just try to empty it nice and neat. I can already tell you right now, somebody out there is gonna say this is disgusting. You did, should never eat out of a trash bag. If you've ever been in the restaurant business, trash bags are your best friend. We do everything from bulk seasoning to marinate meats in them, you name it. Never bothered me one bit. Have you ever gotten sick? Nope. Have you, how long have you been eating out of a trash bag? <laughs> 20 mean, years? This is how you make your checks mix. <laughs> 20 years. You just definitely don't want a scented trash bag. <laughs> no, lavender wouldn't be good. Or so. Look, just taking that stuff. This is a oh. hard video to film. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it looks like crap. It's a lot of food. All right, so look, we've got it basically covered as much as we can. Notice how each individual one's kind of moist. That's what you're looking for. It might not be perfect, but we're still going to allow the mix. So this is where it comes in the same idea. Don't add it all at once. Like dusting. I wouldn't say a cup. But I would say, you know, like a light handful and just start rotating it. I'm gonna save a little bit of the mix. This is our final rotation. That way you can sprinkle it all on the griddle when it's a lot more even. This is another uh, way that if you guys wanted to make one super spicy, you can definitely separate it at this point. You can pound that heat on there. That way you know which one's which. So this is gonna go in the smoker. I got my smoker set at 250, and we're gonna give it about, start about every 15 minutes, and we're going to pull it probably in like 45 minutes to an hour. Let's talk about griddle trim, griddle temps, and controlling our temperatures. The pit boss, if you guys have followed me, know that this is a, a very low spot on the temperature. So I've got this one cut off completely. I've got this one all the way on low. On my Blackstone, my middle is extremely hot, so I've got both of these off and my two outside burners on low. You wanna be able to, in my mind, I've never done it before, be able to have a cool zone and a hot zone, right? Because this is one of those things where you're trying to toast and dry it out. You don't want this thing to go too fast. Oh, here's a tip. Paper towel in your hole. That way the product doesn't go down there. And I've also done aluminum foil on the Blackstone because the grease trap's behind there. Don't melt your trash bag as you're doing that. <laughs> the re one reason why I'm doing this on two different griddles, I didn't know if it really mattered on each one, but one of them does have a hood, which we're gonna try to close it. And the other one, it does have a hood, but I've taken it off for filming purposes. So I don't keep my hood typically on the Blackstone. So I would be interested to know if there is a difference of doming it and hooding it or not. So that's what we're doing today. Look either. All right. As you can tell, I like my Chex Mix extremely seasoned. I'm not shy on my seasoning. And now is the weight game. You're just tossing your Scrabble, tossing your Chex Mix. You can barely hear it sizzling. That's a good thing. 
and now you're just trying to dry it out. All right, so um, one thing that I was interested in myself is uh, griddle temperatures. One of the very few times where I think the thermometer might help because you're trying to keep that low temperature as much as possible. I very quickly decided to go ahead and turn this burner on low. I could just tell that this griddle is not keeping up with that griddle because I had the middle one off. Being a three burner versus a four burner, I thought that it needed a little extra kick. You could almost hear your um, your oils and fats and butters and stuff sizzling. And I felt like this griddle was not uh, doing that, so I just turned it on. Um, temperature, even on low, is extremely hot. That's why we kind of keep moving the stuff around. It's not one of those things where you keep keep it on there. Same thing over here on my Blackstone. It's a little better. Low 300s. I've got my two burners off in the middle still. And that's what I'm trying to do is just create that low temperature zone to allow this stuff to have a space. Check our edges. See our edges are even hotter because that's what's on. So when I say that you cook on low and you can reach hot temperatures on low, this is why. I'm going to turn this off because I know it's extremely hot. So now all we're going to do is just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. Even with the heat off, allow it to calm down a little bit. Go ahead and cut your burners off. I'm going to allow this to cool down on the griddle. I can tell that it's starting to get a little hot. So we've been in there, what, 25, 28 minutes, something like that? Yep. All right, guys, there you go. Super easy, incredibly flavorful. We make this every single year, and I'm typically out within like two days, and that's just my personal problem. <laughs> this is for the this is for the new ones, this is for the old ones, anybody that cares, right? Let's talk about some things since I've never done it before, and I think it's important. You do not need a hood uh, to think that you need to cook this on the griddle. I actually would think that you would not want the hood because it keeps you more aware. I knew for a fact when I put the hood down that I was gonna keep the hood down longer than what I wanted to, just because you think that doming effect. And I think in the long run, it kind of like got that bottom a little bit doneer than what I'd like. Um, moving around on the griddle is not a big deal. Both griddles got extremely hot and I knew they would, they just kept building that heat. That's almost a good thing, right? This would have taken an hour. Uh, this is a lot of checks Mix. Yes, I had two griddles, but um, honestly, within probably 25, yep. 30 minutes, your checks Mix is done. Uh, your Scrabble's done. So it was not hard. It was actually a breeze. My wife even commented, this seems like it's easier than doing it in the ovens because I make so much. I have to rotate the product in and out of the ovens. I've got about 14 sheet pans stacked on top of each other, and it's a mess. This, if done again, would have been a lot easier. It's one of those things like you never know until you do it. I'm glad I did it, and I can see me doing it this way more often. The difference is just keep it going, right? Keep your temperature as low as possible fluctuate your burners and I think there comes to a point to where your heat builds and builds and builds in your cereal and that burn point can happen in a hurry so just keep that in mind I don't know if I need to taste it I think you guys know that mm. all day all day <laughs> long that's why we make it in like the end of the year because <laughs> the diet starts two months from now yep <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to do. It's chow time. I'm absolutely pumped we did it on the griddle. Really neat way to do it. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. Just check that out. It's where you guys can help out the channel. We appreciate each and every one of you for doing so. Check out the griddle group on Facebook. It's where we get inspiration, where we throw ideas back and forth. We just talk about griddle life, right? It's what inspires us is just seeing what you guys do, and we love it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Try something crazy. Mm. Mm. Oh, I didn't try the smoke. I one. know, we did it. I mean, yeah, you tasted it. Mm. This stuff's so good.